Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. This is episode six of the Bitcoin series. In today's episode, I will show you guys how to safely install Electrum on Mac OS and how to make sure that all Electrum traffic is routed through Tor. If you want to learn more about why that matters, there's an episode on Bitcoin privacy, which I will link in the description. Now this setup should not be considered safe. It is what we call a hot wallet setup. Uh, I would recommend a setup like this to anyone who is just getting started with Bitcoin or anyone that is holding under a thousand bucks for anything more, you would likely need a hardware wallet. Uh, now the good news is Electrum is compatible with hardware wallets and I will be talking more about this in the uh, episode, I believe on multi-signature setups, which is coming shortly. Um, Electrum is an open source project that is highly peer reviewed. If we have a look at the uh, repository here, well, there are over 200 contributors, 290 to be precise, which is quite amazing. That means that the project has a lot of eyes on it and is something that a lot of us in the Bitcoin space consider a stable uh, one project that we can trust. Now, um, to anyone watching this, before I forget, anything you read down there in the comments, that might be someone trying to steal your Bitcoin or steal your money. So please be mindful about this. And I'm counting on each and every one of you uh, to report any spammy comments so that we get to keep this conversation going. Um, now, before I go about showing you guys all of this, uh, this time I don't want to forget to mention ShakePay. ShakePay is a Canadian Bitcoin exchange used by Canadians to buy and sell Bitcoin. They have supported the whole Privacy Guides project and has uh, sponsored the Bitcoin series. So without them, this project would not have been possible. Thank you so much to ShakePay. Uh, I'll link to them in the description. Uh, all right, so all of these disclaimers and thank you sent, uh, we can now have a look at the reference material. Uh, if you go on my website, and I'll link to this in the description, there is a little guide on how to install and use Electrum over Tor on Mac OS. Um, this requires you guys to be running Homebrew on your Mac. Uh, so if you are, you can skip, 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 skip these steps. Uh, if you want to know if you have brew on your computer, you can just type brew dash dash version. If something is returned, that means that you have brew. If not, uh, you want to take this here, paste it into your terminal, press enter, uh, which I will skip as I already have homebrew. Then you want to make sure that you uh, copy paste this to disable brew analytics. And then we want to install GNUPG. GNUPG, uh, I have talked about that project for some time. It's an open source project. Uh, it's an open source implementation, we could say, of PGP, uh, allowing us to send encrypted email. For instance, ProtonMail uses that. Uh, and it also allows uh, developers to sign releases uh, cryptographically so that we, the users, can use their public key to validate the integrity of releases. And that's what we're going to be doing in a second here. So if you want to see if you have uh, GNUPG installed, just type GPG dash dash version enter, and it is installed. Quick reminder, always make sure that you update brew packages uh, to make sure that updates uh, are implemented on your systems. There was a GNUPG vulnerability that has been patched. So always be mindful about updating both brew itself and the installed packages. Okay, uh, now we want to download Thomas uh, Thomas's uh, public key. So if we press enter, as you can see, the his public key is on the repository of Electrum. Uh, I have little snitch, so I will allow this. Uh, once it's imported, uh, we're all set. Next up, we want to download Electrum. So if we click here, uh, current release sember 4.1.4, uh, 4. we want to download the executable for OSX, and then we want to down. Whoop, uh, we want to also download uh, Thomas's uh, signed uh, or PGP signature for this release. So if we click here, press Command S, we can then save this in the downloads folder as well. Uh, once this is done, we can verify the integrity of the release 4.1.4 using Thomas's uh, signature. Enter uh, good signature. We can also compare the fingerprint with what is published here. If you want to learn more about PGP signing uh, or how to verify signatures, click here. Uh, that will bring you to uh, reference material and there's a whole episode for this. Um, all right, so next up, you're used to this, click on Electrum, uh, and then we want to drag and drop the Electrum app to the uh, Electrum, uh, to the application folder. So I'm going to click uh, Command N to open a finder window, drag and drop this on applications. Uh, oh yeah, so it was already there, so this is actually updating it. And then we can uh, eject the Electrum DMG. 
and now we want to do the same for Tor. So as you can see, Tor browser is already installed. So this will, uh, you know, install it for you guys if you don't have Tor browser already on your computer, or it will update it if you have. Uh, all right. So um, we want to go to. Oh, actually, we want to import the Tor developers signing key. Uh, so this is a little different than what we did for Electrum. Electrum has that uh, pub key on the repository on GitHub. In this case, we're using a key server instead, uh, which is equivalent in many ways. Uh, so I will allow this true little snitch for a minute. And uh, then voila, we're good. It's imported. So we can then go to the Tor project download page, download the uh, OSX uh, release go back and download its associated PGP signature and store it to the downloads folder. Um, all right, so that should be done in a few seconds. Uh, next up, we wanna verify the uh, integrity of this release. Now, uh, as we can see here, uh, the release, the current release semver is 10.0.18. What I have here is 10.0.17. So this reference material was published and there has been an update since. Uh, what that means is when you will run this command, you want to make sure that you replace 17 by 18, enter, and whoa. Oh, sorry. The download had not completed. Boom. Uh, good signature here. And you can compare fingerprints again with what you see here. Uh, all of this is good. Next up, we want to install or update Tor Browser. If you click here, uh, you will essentially just drag and drop the Tor Browser app onto the applications folder, they added a little shortcut, which makes it, whoops, which makes it easier. So you just drag and drop this here, replace, which is essentially an update. I would recommend, by the way, doing this for Electrum. So not using Electrum itself for updates. There's been a vulnerability in the past where uh, there were phishing attacks trying to get users to install compromised versions of Electrum. So for sensitive use cases, I always recommend downloading from a trustworthy source and comparing that uh, comparing these PGP signatures to make sure releases uh, are legit. Uh, okay, so we can go about closing this uh, and clearing our terminal. Uh, and now we're ready to start the Tor Sox5 uh, proxy. So within Tor browser is found a Tor binary. The Tor bi binary is used to set up Tor Sox5 proxies that other apps can use to route traffic through Tor, so through the dark net, uh, we can see that the SOX proxy is listening on uh, you know, localhost essentially and port 9050. And that is what we are going to bind to. So Electrum app, instead of just double clicking the app in the applications folder, you would wanna run it uh, or start the Electrum app using command line. And that allows us to give it a proxy uh, argument uh, and then tell it to connect through SOX Five and localhost and port 9050, so that matches what we had here. Uh, what that means is that when I press enter, this will run, uh, or Electrum will run all of its traffic through Tor. Now, if you guys are just experimenting with things, you can use dash dash testnet as an argument, and that will uh, set up essentially a Bitcoin testnet wallet. Testnet is a separate blockchain that is used by developers or tinkerers to play around with Bitcoin without uh, essentially using real Bitcoin. You can use something called Bitcoin Testnet faucets to get uh, test Bitcoin or Bitcoin Testnet uh, BTCs. Those are, uh, well, that's BTC that you can use in the context of Testnet. It has no intrinsic value. So it's a great way for you guys to just experiment with things. Um, all right, so we will set up uh, a wallet here uh, there's a window that I haven't seen here that maybe was present before, which asks us to auto connect or set up or connect to our own remote servers. Uh, in the context of today's episode, we're going to use uh, public nodes to uh, check balances and stuff like this. It's not the most privacy conscious way. It's better to run our own full nodes, but that's kind of like a very involved process, which I'll likely discuss in future episodes. But given we're routing everything through Tor, it's kind of like a great compromise between privacy and convenience. Um, all right, so next, we're going to create a standard wallet. Um, now, this again is a setup that I would consider a hot wallet, it's good for anything under a 1000 bucks, anything over a 1000 bucks would require a hardware wallet, which I'll discuss in future episodes. So if you have a hardware wallet, you would want to click this and use the private keys on the hardware wallet that makes it way more compartmentalized and much safer. 
as the computer that is intrinsically vulnerable to attacks cannot access the private keys directly. They are safe, uh, safely stored on the hardware wallet. But for today, we are just gonna create a new seed and that is the seed that has been generated. So I am taking a piece of paper and writing that down. I'll fast forward this in post-production. Sorry for the delay. All right, so I did write down the seed on a piece of paper. Um, this is what we call a paper backup. You would wanna store this very securely somewhere in your house or wherever you uh, consider fit for this. Uh, that seed is called a mnemonic and that seed is something that we can use to regenerate an, 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 whoa, an identical wallet. It's something called a deterministic wallet. So with that seed, you can regenerate the private key, which can then, uh, from which we can then derive a master public key, which will then be used to derive all of your receiving addresses, which we'll use to check balances. Whew. Um, now, I always recommend going to options and extending the seed with custom words. Custom words in the context of Electrum is identical to a passphrase in the context of Trezor devices. Um, that is something that allows us to create multiple wallets from the same seed. It means you only have to store one seed uh, from which uh, you can create multiple wallets with different uh, custom words. So uh, once this is selected here, yes, we can click next and I will extend this with uh, something that I wrote on a piece of paper. You would want to consider this um, similar to how you consider a passphrase for a password manager. So let me type this in. I have one on a piece of paper here. Um, okay, and as you can see, I think this is 14 characters long. That is safe enough for most use cases, but if you're holding a significant amount of BTC, you would wanna have this be at least 28 characters long and have it be not subject to a dictionary attack or brute force attacks. Uh, more on, I've discussed all of this in the episodes on password managers, so you can use the search and find these if you wish. So let me just confirm I wrote this properly. Um, I believe this is good next. So now we need to type this in again. Uh, to make sure that we have a paper backup. Now, you may be wondering uh, why when I type words, it is auto-completing them. That is because both Electrum uh, and BIP39 uses the same set of, uh, I think it's 2048 words. Um, those words are what mnemonics are made of. Electrum has its own mnemonic algorithm uh, that differs from BIP39. So even though those words are from the same dictionary right now, uh, conceptually speaking, that might change in the future. So uh, I might link to uh, an article on this, why Electrum decided to stop using BIP39, but when using a hardware wallet or when uh, creating a wallet with a seed that you already have, it is possible to set up an Electrum wallet using both a 12 or a 20 word, uh, 24 word mnemonic that is BIP39 compliant. Uh, okay, so mountain, next. Now this, all right, so Electrum is now asking you for a password. That password will be used to encrypt the wallet. Uh, if this is a hot wallet and you don't wanna remember a million passwords in your mind, you can use the same as you have used to extend the seed. This is not great advice for larger holdings, but for today, this is what I am going to do. Um, and you definitely want to encrypt the wallet file. Boom, okay. So uh, for security reasons, we advise you always use the latest version of Electrum. Would you like to be notified when there is a newer release available? I'm gonna say no, as, as I recommended, uh, it's better for us to manually check this from the uh, Electrum website once in a while. Um, okay, you are in a testnet mode. Uh, testnet coins are worthless, blah, 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 okay. So as you can see, our balance is synchronized. If we click here, we can see that we're connected to a whole bunch of no nodes, um, but we're running through Tor, which uh, adds this increased level of privacy. So uh, folks, this is how you set up Electrum safely, how you make sure that PGP uh, signatures are correct and releases are valid or safe, and how you make sure that Electrum routes all its traffic over Tor. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Um, more on Electrum in next episode. I think next episode is the one where I'm going to show you guys how to set up multi-sig wallets using hardware wallets. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll see you soon. Bye.